Hey guys, Jared Luttner here, Tackle Warehouse Pro Staff. You know, winter is here. Um, it's one of the best times of the year for me to fish. I'm home from off the tour. You know, it's cold out. There's not very many people at the lake. And it gives me a really good excuse to go to the lake, get away from all the distractions and really focus on my upcoming season. But it's a great time of year to catch some big fish. Um, you know, growing up where I did, I mean, that was primarily the, the greatest time of year for me because, like I said, there's very few people on the lake. You can work on your skills and different techniques, but there's three main techniques that I go to. They're in my boat all winter long. And first of all, it's a jig. This here is an Eco Pro jig. It's a tungsten head jig, green pumpkin orange. I throw a lot of brown purples. I throw a lot of brown, you know, brown blacks, that kind of thing. I got a Jackal 3.5 inch chunk craw on there. And again, I, I like that tungsten head just because it's so sensitive um, when it's hitting rocks or if I'm fishing shells or if I'm fishing, you know, I can tell the difference between when it's on rock as opposed to when it's on gravel. I mean, and not only that, it detects bites. When a fish sucks that bait in, boom, you know it. Um, you know, and I, what I'm doing is I'm using my Garmin electronics and I'm slowly Again, I emphasize slowly because you get in a hurry, you're going to miss a school of fish or, you know, fish that are real tight to the bottom. You don't want to be plowing through there. You want to really utilize your electronics and pay attention to those to those screens. Um, I'm looking for long points, um, different kinds of rock, you know, whether it goes from chunk rock to pebble rock, baseball rock to gravel, whatever it may be. Um, that's kind of the stuff I'm looking for. Different, different contrast of the bank. And a lot of times you can look up on the bank and go, okay, there's a vein that runs down that I can see it's red clay that goes to big shale rock. You can follow that down, use your electronics, like I said, and just scan. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll start from like maybe 25, work all the way out. I mean, I catch them in the winter out to 60 feet, 70 feet on occasions. So. You know, I, I don't really get wrapped into just fishing the whole stretch of a, say, a, a arm of a lake or a, a finger. I want, I'm very specific on what I'm looking for. And then I'll just take the jig. Um, I very seldom, very seldom will I fish it vertically. Cast it out, you know, and I'm, I'm using a real slow, methodical retrieve. You know, very, very seldom will my working it like you would, you know, when the water temp's warmer. Because again, these water temps could be down in shoot the 40s all the way to you know 50s and sometimes i've even caught them in like high 30 degree water you know at some of my home lakes so you're not going to get those real aggressive bites you know you're going to work it real real slow um, i'll give a little pop every now and then but really pay attention to what's what you're fishing and when you do get that bite try to duplicate it in other areas so you know you're not going to pull up on a point and go whack 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 and go over that point and do the same thing you, you kind of got to grind around. You got to have confidence. You got to be patient. Um, the rod that I like throwing, well, first of all, this here is a three quarter ounce head. Um, we got a half, a three quarter, and a one ounce. I start off with a three quarter ounce 99% of the time. And then if I'm going deeper in that 50 to 70 foot range, I'll go to the one ounce. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, the green pumpkin orange, green pumpkin purples, brown and purples, stuff like that. Uh, generally, what I'm throwing, is 16 pound shooter. Um, you know, it's, it's very abrasive resistant. Uh, it's, I mean, I could feel everything with that shooter line. And um, the rod I'm throwing is a seven foot five ritual angling heavy casting rod. You know, again, you're throwing a big heavy jig. So if you got, you know, if your bait's out there in 50 foot of water and you, you got, let's say, 100 feet of line out by the time it gets back to the boat. Dude, you got to have enough power, enough backbone to set the hook, drive that hook into that fish's mouth and land it. So, you know, you can see the bend in that rod. It's, it's pretty stout. It's got a lot of, lot of backbone, real sensitive, seven foot five. And then what I do is I pair that with a Daiwa Tatula Elite Reel, eight to one. Again, the distance, you got to remember, the bait's out there in 50 foot, maybe 50 foot of line coming back. There, you know, on a long cast, there's a lot of line out. So you got to have a high speed gear ratio to not only drive that hook home, but keep up with those fish. Cause sometimes they want to come straight up. Other times they're going away from you. So I feel like having a high speed gear ratio is the best for me. 
Um, and that's kind of my jig setup. That's probably, I mean, when I go to the lake, that's the first rod I pick up, no matter where I'm at. And then, so everybody knows that I love throwing a TN70, a lipless crankbait. You know, and I, I throw it from, basically I have one on year round, and a lot of guys only think it's a fall pre-spawn bait, but in the winter time, it's kind of one of my secrets. And sorry, sorry I'm sharing it. Actually, I'm sorry to myself. But that TN70, because of the tungsten lip, you can fish it just like this football jig down there in 30, 40 feet real effectively. And they're not, they're not seeing a, a vibrating you know, crankbait down that deep that time of year. They just don't see it. I like the ghost minnows. Um, occasionally, very seldom, I'll throw like a red, um, but basically the shad colors is what I'm keying in on. Um, and again, I'm, I'm throwing out there Make a long cast, follow, let the line fall on slack line all the way to the bottom. When it hits the bottom, I'm just slowly jigging it, much like I would the football jig, just a different presentation. I can't tell you how many fish I've caught on my home lakes where there's a, you know, a big tournament, guys, everybody's throwing a jig and a drop shot and this and this and this. They ain't seeing the TN70. They, they're not seeing a vibrating crankbait down, or a lipless crankbait down that deep. But along with that, and I'll talk about my rod and reel here in a second. Back in the day, I'm talking back in the day, here's an old silver buddy, old, old school. And a guy that I fished with years ago was like, man, you gotta throw the silver buddy, that's the deal. Well now, Jackal just came out with these key burn. It's a blade bait. So you can see they're kind of similar, but I mean, this is much more prettier. Um, we have different colors, just came out from Jackal. I will be throwing that this year. Um, again, I just got them. I've actually caught some fish here at the lake, just tossing them around, seeing how they move. And again, it's that vibration. Obviously, there's no rattles in this. There's a rattle in the TN70. So again, you're fishing that bait, that little key burn. This is a half ounce. Um, you're fishing it just like I talked about the jig. Throw it out, let it hit the bottom. Slow little pumps, just kind of crawl it, drag it. Very, I mean, it's kind of, you can't get in a hurry you're not gonna get bit. Just slowly pump that bait, drag it across that stuff, rocks, whatever it may be, boom. The most important thing with both of those baits though is having the right rod. This here, I designed this rod for a, for a lipless crankbait. Um, this is a 7.6 Signature Series heavy glass rod. And the reason I like that is just because of that parabolic bend on, with the treble hooks and with that blade style bait you got treble hooks on there, so you don't want a power of the graphite. You're kind of you're kind of doing a lean back hook set, and you keep them on, and that that rod's going to do the work. Generally, I would say 99% of the time, I'm throwing 14 pound Sniper FC Sunline. Um, I, you know, especially when I'm fishing deep. If I'm fishing super super deep, I'm talking 50 plus. I'll go to like a 10 or a 12 pound Sunline Sniper. Um, but majority of the time I'm throwing 14. I'm throwing a Daiwa Tatula Elite, high speed, 7-1 uh, gear ratio, and I'm making those long casts, I'm bombing. Again, you're fishing it just like the jig. You just gotta remember, you got treble hooks, you better have the right rod. You know, if, if you, you just wanna have a good glass rod for fishing either one of these styles of baits, you know, for, for making those casts, for landing those fish, you got to have the parabolic bend. Um, the length is up to you, whatever you're comfortable fishing. Uh, so then what we have is the famous drop shot. Obviously California, um, done a lot of this. This here is one of my go-tos in the winter. You know, if I'm seeing them on the graph and I fished over them, I couldn't get them on my jig, I couldn't get them on my TN, I'm trying all this different stuff. I don't know why, but they always go back to biting the drop shot. <laughs> this here is a Jackal Eyeshad. Um, they just came out with some brand new colors. This is a 3.8. We got a 2.8, which is obviously an inch smaller, a little more thinner, um, and it gets bit. I mean, the shad colors, we do have some green pumpkins, but mainly in the winter, I'm throwing shad colors, different, different you know, shades, either blue shad, green shad. Uh, there's several different choices, but that's one of my favorite ones right there. Um, I'm fishing that on a Trocar drop shot hook. Number one, Trocar drop shot hook. Eco Pro Tungsten quarter ounce full contact uh, drop shot weight. And what I do is I do 
99% of the time when I'm vertical fishing or drop shot fishing, I use a, a longer leader, FG knot, to Sunline SX1 10 pound braid. My leader will depend on how clear the water is. Sometimes I'll go six pound sniper FC, sometimes I'll go up to 10 pound. It just kind of depends how, how clear that water is, what I'm fishing around, if I'm fishing standing timber or just you know rock piles or wh whatever it may be. I kind of I kind of just have a spools of line rigged up in there. I tie a quick FG knot and I'm ready to go. Throwing a medium light ritual angling seven foot one spinning rod and a brand new Certe Daiwa, Daiwa spinning reel. It's a 3000 size that picks up a lot of line real quick. So when you're making that long cast out there and one bites it, you can crank up to it real quick without, you know, old school reels. Sometimes, you know, you're winding, 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 and you never even get into that fish. So Daiwa Certe reel. And again, what I'm looking for is much like the jig. Um, rock piles, extended points, humps, uh, old road beds. That's another favorite for all these, all these techniques. Road beds are, is, is a must. If you have road bed in your lake and you're in the winter time, you better scan it, find the little irregularity in that road bed and you're gonna get bit. Again, winter time is all about being patient and paying attention to the small minor details. You got the, you know, if you have the right baits and you got, obviously you need the right apparel, right? You don't wanna be out there and freezing and you know, not be able to even detect a bite because your hands are so cold. So have the right apparel and uh, the right baits, and the right mindset, and you're gonna catch fish. Hope these tips help you guys catch more fish this winter. Make sure and check out all the gear available at tacklewarehouse.com.